Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be looking at the Real Link Argus. It's 100% wire free and only takes four batteries. It could be used indoors and outdoors and it's supported by Android and iOS. As I mentioned earlier, it's 100% wire free. It has passive infrared sensor for motion detection, full 1080p, supports up to six months of standby time. It is weatherproof and I'll drop all the specs down below. The, like it says, it has infrared night vision. You can stream it anywhere you go and you can have all the notifications sent to your phone. And it supports two-way audio, so you can talk to the person on the outside and they could in turn talk back to you. So let's get to the unboxing. Okay, right off the bat, product documentation. Let's see what it says here. Okay, we have the quick start guide. Just telling you how to set it up. We'll go through that. What's next? Let's see. Just talk about the product itself and some additional products. A mounting template, another mounting template, and a sticker if you want to put on the outside of your house on the glass or something. Okay, so. Looks pretty nice. It does look like it's a sturdy build. It doesn't feel cheap. Here is where you put your micro SD card because it does not come with an SD card. And there's your SD card slot and there I don't know if you can see that there is your reset button yeah it looks like right there you'll need a, a paper clip or something in order to do it down here is obviously where you're gonna plug it into the mount and here's where you could open the case looks like it's pretty tight I guess in order to keep it waterproof here is the QR code it makes it easy just to scan into the app and I'll directly pick everything up so it makes it easy set up for you there's a stand. Looks like it gets about two inches in length out. I guess that's the paper clip in order to reset. Here's some screws are provided. Some more screws. It does come with four batteries. And as you can see, it is CR123 and it's a three volt. So it takes obviously four of these small batteries. Let's go in here. So here's the base. Uh, it looks to be a magnetic base, so let's just try this out here. Oh. And it does seem to stick on pretty well. I'm having difficulty. I'm putting quite a bit of force in order to get this thing off. Uh, when it comes time to change your batteries, it'll make it nice and easy for you to just go and grab it and yank it off. The base is quite sturdy as well. And obviously this would connect here if you wanted to. Oh. <laughs> it is quite a bit of a challenge it seems to get the, the base screwed in here so if you just want to have it onto the base so you could give it flexibility and where you're gonna be positioning it you can do it like that okay and this here seems to be the prong in order to take the back case off so we're gonna try doing that right now to get this thing um, started we'll just push in right there Push in right there, and then you just push it up. And then we'll just slide it up there. And there's the inside of the unit. We'll just add the batteries now. And then we'll just pop. Oh, and you. So as you can see, it's telling you that the camera is on and to go to the app to set it up. So we'll just put the cover back on here. Okay, so now we're gonna start the Real Link app here. We'll hit add new device. And then we'll have it scan the QR code. There you go, it's all set up now. It says here, access the camera. The camera has already been set up, I just wanna access the camera. And on the top, we'll see here that we have set up camera. I wanna set up and reconfigure my camera. Please run the Real Link app and add new device. I heard the voice prompt, so we'll click on that. It wants to connect to our Wi-Fi network, so we'll just type in our information here. And once we've done that, we'll just hit 
I have entered the correct information. And it's saying for us now to scan it. There, there we go. And now we'll press the I heard scan succeeds. I heard, I heard scan succeeds. And now it's connecting to our device. So we'll want to give the name of our camera here. Then we'll hit create password. And now we'll just press skip and get right into the app. So now we're back at the real link app here and right away we can see the Argus front and at the bottom you'll notice there's those five little square icons there with the battery level, push notifications, uh, PIR which is your passive infrared sensor, Wi-Fi and settings. On the far left there with the battery icon, if the Argus senses that you're using quite a bit of recording time, it will give you a little notification there on the top right hand side of that square and when you click on it, you'll see down here it will show how many minutes the camera has been in use for. And it gives um, friendly suggestions on how you can make adjustments to reduce the recording time so you're not recording unnecessary information. We'll click back there. Push notifications will, will obviously just notify your phone every time it does detect motion. PIR is your passive infrared. It helps sense changes in temperature, so it will know like if a body is coming from the camera to start recording. Wi-Fi is exactly what it is. It's just showing you all the different Wi-Fi's available in your area. Now we're just gonna go right into the setting. Obviously at the top, Wi-Fi, that's just gonna show you once again, just your Wi-Fi connections, your network status of what the IP of your camera is. The display settings here um, gives you um, a bit of options here. So display camera name, and I gave mine the name of Argus tr Front Tree. You could change that obviously to whatever you want. Name position, um, wherever you want to put on your display. You have a few different options there. If you want to display the date, date position, rotation, if you want to flip, flip it vertically, horizontally, um, you would do it that way, your anti-flicker. The quality here is how, when you connect to the camera, how you want it to display. Now the encode sound, we'll just leave that as default. Um, that's if you want to include the sound in your video stream. The SD card here is the information of the SD card you do have in the camera. So under alarm, you have the PIR sensor, and this allows you to fully disable the PIR sensor. So it will not record anything unless you actually hit the view button and click the record button. Under PIR settings, you could at the very top set a schedule. So you could say only during time record motion and the days of the week back there. On the sensitivity level, you could say, hey, how sensitive, obviously, as the wording says, how often it's gonna trigger the alarms. Enable siren will produce an audible alarm. So when the camera does detect activity in front of it, it will start creating an audible alarm. Send email, so every time it does get a, a motion detection, it will snap a picture and then email it off. And recording is another option here at the very bottom. So now under account security is just your password for your camera. Infrared lights, this will allow the night vision recording. The status LED is the little blue light on the camera. So whenever it detects motion or activity to the camera, like you viewing the video stream, it will give a little blue circle. You can actually disable that with this option here, which makes it that when someone's walking out, they don't notice the camera's been activated. So under notification, you'll see email settings. By default, you'll see that Gmail is the default server there. As a note, you should go into your Gmail account and set your security settings to low. Otherwise, you will not be able to send an email from your account. Next year, I'll have your sender's email as well as your password. So just input that in. Under attachment, just choose to select whether or not you want to select an attachment or not. And then obviously the button at the bottom will give you your email test. Your system information. If you click on that, it just tells you your model number, build, hardware version, and so on. Your date and time. This is the date and time that will be presented on your camera when you're recording. And if you want to do a uh, factory reset, just click the restore button and then the upgrade. If there was a firmware upgrade, you could then select that. Okay, we're back at the main screen of the app and we're gonna go into the actual camera footage now and see how it looks. So you can see here, this is the live view. Let's go through the app here. And here we have um, to pause a live stream. Um, we can just hit the little pause symbol here to play it again. You just have to press on it. Uh, to the right of it is just uh, mute the sound. So if we want to unmute the sound, we would just press that and then we can hear what's going on outside. 
the little camera there is to take a snapshot of what's currently happening. If you press the little camera there, you can record what's happening at this present time. So we'll just press that right there. And you can see on the top right hand corner, it shows that it's recording. And as you can see, when you record something manually, it will save locally to the device you are recording on. Over here is your view options, which will give you access to multiple cameras at the same time. And now the icon to the right of it will give you your different playback options, whether you want to view the live stream in 1080p or 720p. So clear or fluent. And then if you want to maximize your screen, you can just hit the two arrows going side to side. Okay, so the talk button here is to enable a two-way microphone. I have tested this and I've been told it is actually quite loud. My wife and kids were outside, so I decided from work to just press it and just give them a shout. And they said it sounded like a megaphone outside. So I'm pretty pleased with that, that they were able to communicate back and forth with me. Next is playback. So we'll just click on this here. And this will allow you to go through the, your footage. So let's say yesterday you want to go through your footage. You could just hit the, the date up there and you could choose the day's worth of footage here. So we could say on the 25th and then done. The top line is the minute by minute timeline and the bottom line is more of a long range. So if you want to see what was happening between let's say um, 8 p.m. 8, 9 o'clock here we choose 8 o'clock. So now we're over the eight o'clock time frame, and on the top we would see the bars is where we recorded. So when we do that, we could just hit the play symbol now, and we could see myself walking over there into the house. But let's say you actually wanted to download the footage so you can have a local copy on your mobile device. You can just hit the cloud symbol here on the top left hand corner and that will download at least 30 seconds of footage. So I'll just do that right now. So we can say, hey, let's download here. Your maximum time you can download is 30 seconds, but you can reduce it. So, so we'll go over here and I'll just reduce it a bit so we don't get any of the other blank spots. And then we just hit download this video file. And there we go, it's done. And it tells you the path that's downloaded to. So next, I'm gonna show you the sample footage that you're probably been all waiting for. So overall, I'm impressed with the Argus. At a $99 price point, it offers great video quality and a great set of features. But one thing I want to make sure everyone is aware of is with any battery power camera, you will lose a few seconds of footage as the camera is in a constant standby state and it will require some time to actually boot up and start recording. So that concludes today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below and I'll see you in the next one.